ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition of Talk. Welcome back. You are looking at a copy of the book Double Cross, written by Sam and Chuck Giancana, the godson and the brother of mob boss Sam Giancana. And, and Sam, um, we were talking a little bit about your childhood, and of course, um, everybody that has read the book, everybody that is getting ready to read it, uh, seen your appearances on television and whatever, are really pretty much amazed that all of these things that you're talking about, I mean, a lot of people grew up in an era when you rat on the mafia and you get mm -hmm. killed. Mm -hmm. you know, talk about uh, organized crime, or even mention that there's such a thing, mm -hmm. and the cement shoes and everything mm -hmm. else. But yet, here you are with your dad, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Sam's brother, mm -hmm. writing this book that implicates and names names and mm -hmm. talks about certain areas and aspects of, uh, of some of the greatest events, I guess you call them great only in magnitude, mm -hmm. that happened in our history. What made you write it and uh, to get into such detail concerning the events? Well, we felt that it was important to set the record straight, uh, to give the American public as much information about Sam and what he was involved in nationally and globally because it's affected us all. We've all been victims of, of his doings. And uh, we just decided that uh, now was the time uh, my father was getting up in years and uh, contemplating his mortality. And as a result, it just seemed now was the right time. <coughs> but we never really felt that we were really ratting on anybody or turning anybody uh, in uh, for prosecution because we're talking about a period of time that represents from the early 1900s up to 1965 for all intents and purposes. So. A lot of the people are gone, but some people are still around, and I think it's important. I have a certain respect for history. I was a history major, and I felt, uh, let's get as much information to the historians as possible so that if this did happen, let's just say it happened and let's move on rather than fooling ourselves and saying, well, everything was wonderful and this couldn't have been a possibility. But I think we've all been kind of desensitized to a lot of these things that we've heard now for the last 20 years, all these different theories, and so all of a sudden, me coming forth and saying, here's what I know about it, it's explosive, but I, th I think people are willing to look at it a little bit more than they, they were, because now we've seen some questionable activities with our government, we, we know more about the mob than we did, and uh, we feel a lot more comfortable that we're not going to wind up with any kind of retaliatory kind of action, because uh, um, I think uh, we're in a position to kind of try and set the record straight. You know, as you were saying that, I'm also a history major. Mm -hmm. I remember Ger George Bernard Shaw's line, history will lie as always. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as I read this, and of course I can mention some few things and just a quick comment from mm -hmm. you, St. Valentine's Day Massacre, mm -hmm. Sam was there. That's right. Well, he was, you know, a young man at that time. He had worked his way. He had a, he had a small little uh, gang called the 42s, and the, and, they, and the big syndicate members, Al Capone and Diamond Joe Esposito, were always looking for young, fresh, tough, tough kids to to perform different acts and Sam had distinguished himself as a wheelman and eventually as a as, an, as a killer and to, when it came time to try to unify Chicago and that's what Al Capone did unify all the gangs under one authority uh, he selected uh, Sam and uh, good friend Needles uh, along with some other men uh, men even from Detroit uh, to try to make sure that they weren't recognized by the North Side gang and they went and did the job and uh, little did we know it was going to be uh, come uh, uh, stuff of legend, mm -hmm. you know, so Sam was right there at the beginning and and as a result he he worked for men like uh, Machine Gun Jack McGurn who was a who was a prominent enforcer for for Al Capone and and got to know Paul Rico out of Chicago who became a prominent boss and Sam's timing was good that uh, as things happened to the men on top for example in the late 30s a lot of the top echelon in Chicago went to jail as a result of the Brown buy-off a Hollywood scandal. It was a it was a case brought against ex extortion to the Hollywood uh, studios. Uh, even Joe Shank, a 20th Century Fox, went to prison for extortion uh, for actually not paying taxes on money he had received. And um, so Sam was at the right point to be right close to the top. And subsequently, things like that always kept Sam in the right place at the right time.